What is going on everyone? Leon checking in and today we're at it again with another video. So tonight is a very exciting night because we're actually going to turn the Pixel 4 XL on for the very first time. And we're gonna go ahead and share what that's like. You're going to see the screens as I work through this. Now this is all a part of the experience for the channel. Of course, the channel is called Pixels Crack and the name was influenced by the Pixel. So what I have here is a series of videos about the Pixel 4 XL if you're new to the channel. So I'm gonna put a link in the corner of this video for the Pixel 4 XL playlist. So you can go ahead and click on that and watch more Pixel 4 XL related videos. So just to give you an idea of what's in that playlist, we went over a few things. We went ahead and we unboxed the Pixel 4 XL. Then we went ahead and we installed the OtterBox Defender Series case. And then we went ahead and installed the LK screen protector. Now these are pretty simple videos, but we actually went over some really good details in each and every one of them. And I wanted to do this in a specific order. I wanted to do this in the order that you see here because I feel like when people are getting a new device like the Pixel 4 XL, this is how they would set up a phone. Now, once all those prerequisites are met, then you can turn the device on for the very first time. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so here we are with my Google Pixel 4 XL. Again, we've got the Outer Box Defender Series case on there and it's sitting in the holster. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out here. So we're gonna go ahead and hold the power button down and wait a moment here. So we're gonna show what's going on exactly here so you can actually know what to expect when you're going to set up this phone for the first time. So here we are with the colorful Google colors. Now we're gonna zoom in here and again, just so people know, I'm doing this video on the Pixel 3 XL. I do all my videos on a Pixel device. So now that we have the Pixel 4 XL, I'll also be doing videos from that device as well. Now we're gonna zoom out just a little bit there and you can see that we are at this welcome screen. It says hi there and we're going to choose our language and you can also see there's vision settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to click on the language here. So you can see you could change your language if you need it to, but we're gonna go with English. Then we can go ahead and click United States. Now we also have vision settings here and we're gonna click on that. So we got a few things going on here. We have magnification. Normally that's done by tapping on the screen a few times and then you'll zoom in. Next you could change the font size and that's pretty self-explanatory. That just makes the text larger or smaller. Then we've got the display size and that makes items on the screen larger or smaller as well. Now the next two features are very helpful for someone who has a hard time seeing. We've got select to speak. So basically when you click on items on the screen, what those items are, they're gonna be spoken out loud. And then we have talk back and that's a screen reader and that's for people with blindness and low vision. So we can go ahead and back right out of here and then we can just go ahead and click start. Now on this page, you have to go ahead and select your Wi-Fi network. Now the device is going to check for updates now that it's connected to a network. Now this next screen that you see here is going to ask us if we want to copy apps and data. Basically, this is going to make a copy of what you have on your previous phone. And I normally don't do this only because I want to start fresh. I have a lot of junk on my phone that I don't necessarily want. So by clicking don't copy here, we can go ahead and start from scratch. Now, if you're someone who just wants a new device set up exactly how your current one is, then you'll hit next and it'll copy the apps and data for you. But again, for me, I'm starting from scratch, so I'm going to click don't copy. Now, doing this doesn't mean you're not going to sign into your Google account. It just means, again, you're starting the phone basically from scratch. We're not recovering any apps or data from the previous phone. So on this next screen, as you see, we're going to sign in with our Google account. Now there was a previous screen here where I had to sign in with two-factor verification. Now if you have two-factor verification set up, you may be asked to sign in just like that as well. Now if you don't know what two-factor verification is, pretty much it's when you enter your password on a device, but then you have to actually verify that's you on another device. So the next page that we have here would be Google's Terms of Service. Now, if you want a little bit more information about what's going on here, you can actually click on these blue words here and they'll bring up another menu and you can actually review the different areas. But we're gonna close out of that and we're just going to hit I agree. So now you're going to see this screen here where it's going to be activating. So I'm going to be transferring my service from my Google Pixel 3 XL 
to the Google Pixel 4 XL. So we're actually going to start by clicking move my number. Now you can see this worked pretty quickly here. You've activated service on this phone, pretty much effortless. Now the transfer isn't 100% complete yet. We still have to do a few things, so we're gonna hit next. Now this next page is going to ask if you want to help improve the network quality, and that's basically sending information from your phone to Google Fi. Now I'm a big supporter of this kind of stuff, and you don't have to do it, but I do just because I feel like it benefits everyone. Now it's this page here that would have allowed us to back up our apps and data from our previous phone. So if you don't know much about phones and you want the simplest setup possible from here on out, make sure that that slider is blue. Now we can scroll down here and we have a few other things that Google will ask for and you don't necessarily have to allow. You have the use location and basically that just allows allows apps and services with location permission to use your device's location. Then if we scroll down a little more, we have allow scanning. Now that just allows apps and services to scan for Wi-Fi networks and nearby devices, even when Wi-Fi or Bluetooth is turned off. And then we have device maintenance. This is something that I volunteer for too, because of course I want to help improve Android. So I leave that on. So again, you can turn all of these on or off just by clicking on the sliders here. Now the last section we have here would be install updates and apps. Now if you're someone who's trying to watch your data, you may not want updates and apps installed automatically. Now I was looking at this and I tried to expand this to see if I can change settings right now, but it looks like that's not possible at the moment. So once that's all said and done, we can go ahead and click accept. Now this is an interesting page I heard a little bit about from news sources. So we've got additional legal terms here. And of course you've got the terms of service, but most importantly, you've got this Google device arbitration agreement. So what the Google device arbitration agreement is simply saying is that if you find that your device happens to have a widespread issue, or maybe not even a widespread issue, you can't participate with lawyers to get a settlement your single case is dealt with on a single basis. Now going back to the package in here, you can also see that we have that on the box as well, requires acceptance of arbitration terms. So you can see Google is trying to make this something that is apparent. Now for me, I'm going to keep this very simple and I'm going to hit accept. So the next thing we're going to have to do here is set a screen lock using a pin. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So the next thing we're going to have here is set up face unlock and I'm going to go ahead and click next. So we're going to go ahead and set up face unlock and this image is going to show you how that's done just by rotating your face to fill in all these blue areas until it's all gray. So I'm going to try this on the phone right now. We're going to click start. And then I'm going to get my face in here and it's going to tell me to move the phone closer and I'm going to just try to rotate my face around slowly and try to fill in all the blue areas. And this is actually really easy once you get the hang of it. So you can see that we're all done. It's now these are all additional apps that you can review for installation and they are all Google apps. Now if you want them all, you can just leave all the check marks blue or you can tap the top check mark there that will uncheck them all, or you can check the ones you want individually, and then Google will automatically download those over your Wi Fi network if you hit OK. Now it looks like the phone is going to go over the gestures, and this one is telling us that if we swipe up from the bottom of the screen, this will take us to the home screen. Now the next screen is going to tell us how to switch apps. So we're going to swipe up from the bottom of the screen and hold. And then it looks like we're going to just drag our finger across. And now to go back to the last screen, it looks like we're going to swipe towards the middle from the left or right edge. So this is a little confusing. It looks different to me, but it's something that I'm going to try to get used to. So I'm going to click next. Now we can go ahead and swipe up to get started. And this is going to be our home screen here. So this is the basic setup here. This is what it looks like. And we're not going to go too much further because this is supposed to be a very 
basic startup video. Okay, so first impressions here. I gotta say, I was already tricked here. Now, this phone does not have a fingerprint sensor, and once I got done setting it up, I was already looking for the fingerprint sensor and had to remember it's not there anymore. Now, I haven't really played with any of this too long. This is just moments after finishing the main portion of the video, but the face unlock works really, really well. Again, we're gonna have a really detailed playlist here, whole bunch of videos just about the Pixel 4 XL alone. So if you're interested in anything that you're seeing here, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can see all the future videos. So if you enjoyed this video and found it useful, make sure you leave a like. If you have any questions or comments, as always drop those down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Now you can support the channel in two different ways. You can share this video with someone who might find it useful or you can hit that subscribe button. So that is pretty much it. And until next time, Leon, check in out.